Good morning. Good morning, Father. Welcome again to St. Joseph Parish. I'm Father James Krasinski, the pastor of St. Joseph, and it's an honor for our community to celebrate this Eucharist on the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time with you. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, as we gather this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries of this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for his love and forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what it, you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koheleth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune, for what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of, the, of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow, grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past. Or as a watch of the night, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew. But by evening wilts and fades, 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not, on, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision, and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, One's life does not consist in pos of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you rule your possessions, or do your possessions rule you? That is essentially what's at the heart of our Gospel this weekend. In a world that is full of material goods, there are those things that we need. Things to take care of our families, things to take care of ourselves, 
things to take care of our parishes, take care of our schools, take care of our ministries, such as our UW-Stout ministry with Stout Catholic. And so therefore, there is an understanding of the physical goods of this world that truly are necessary to help build up faith. However, if the storing up of material goods becomes focused on self alone and not on the good of the other, not on the good of the community, we can begin to see the acquisition of those good things suddenly can become a false god. That suddenly we can fall into the trap of thinking having more is the only goal in life. What does the Lord call us to do? Give it away. Do not allow your possessions to rule you. As someone who is a student of Ignatian spirituality, St. Ignatius has a very beautiful sentiment in the spiritual exercises of spiritual indifference, meaning that in life we are to be indifferent to all things except for those things that draw us closer to Christ. I love that simple sentiment because in this world of good things, what draws you closer to Christ may be different than me as a priest. And those things that I need may differ from you. And so therefore, amid this creation of good things, we can begin to see that there is a logical diversity of gifts that is meant for all. But in moderation and in simplicity, not in terms of domination, power, exploitation, and acquiring for the sake of acquiring. So therefore, what I would ask us to pray for this week is a simple gift to know what it is that the Lord calls us to acquire to care for our personal needs, our community needs, but also, too, to know when it's time to give away so that we may not have our gifts rule us and, to be quite frank, that we might not rule our gifts as well, but we might see that in all of our gifts they belong to Christ and to be returned to Christ as a self-giving gift of our love of God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He death and was buried. And it was again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, through this common prayer, let us pray to God not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the needs of the whole world. For all Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who are not able to attend Mass in their parish church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who call upon Christ in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we come before you with faith and love to praise your goodness and to acknowledge our need. We ask you to hear the prayers we make in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of his spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints who declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer the sign of peace. you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We are many We are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share, one our hope in despair. On the cross that we bear, God of all, we look to you. We would be your servants true. Let us be your love to all the world. We are many parts. We are all. one indeed, 
One the love that we share One our hope in despair One the cross that we bear Let us pray Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, I would like to thank all of you for joining us here at St. Joseph Parish for the celebration of the Eucharist on this 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please be assured of all of our prayers for you as you go about your week, and please, please pray for us. Also, I'd ask you to pray for an increase of seminarians in our diocese. We are very blessed to have Arturo, one of our seminarians for the diocese, joining us for these masses, and we would ask you to pray that more seminarians uh, enter uh, so that we can have more priests in the diocese and also provide sacramental care for all those in our parishes and all those who are homebound. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, as we move through this remarkable and beautiful year of mercy, we are grateful that God shows his mercy to us and each and every day as we celebrate the Eucharist. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your support. May God bless you and reward you and keep you in his own love and mercy every day of this holy year.